ಭಕ್ತಿ ವಿನೋದಕಾರಿ ಪಲಪನ ವಿಸರೆ ನಹಿ ಜೋ ವಿಸಾರಿ ಜುಗಲ ಚರಣ ಸೋಲ ಚಿನ್ನ ಜೇಹ ನಜರ ಸಮೀ ಪೇರ ಹಮಾರಿಯೇಹ ನಜರ ಸಮೀ ಪೇರ ಹಮಾರಿಯೇಹ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ನಿಜೆ ಹರಿಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ನಿಜೆ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಭಗವಾನ್ ನಿಜೆ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಮೈಡಿ ಅವರ್ ಬಲವೆಡ್ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ದ ಪ್ಯಾಥ್ ಮೇಕರ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಲಿಬರೇಷನ್ ಅವರ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಡಿಯರ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಗುರುಜಿ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಸಂತೋ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಭಗತ್ ಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ last week's lecture was regarding Sadhguru Muktanand Swami and how his saintliness how his persona how his attributes reflected our Guru Parampara starting from Sadhguru Muktanand Swami and all the way currently present to puja guru ji we saw different different tra- traits and we began sadguru muktan swami's jivan charitra meaning his life's divine incidences and today we want to continue and understand more on what made muktanan swami muktanan swami last week just to recap we understood that muktanand swami is one of a kind we understood that out of the 2000 paramahansas that shri ji marj initiated out of that batch 5000 nand santos who directly came from akshardham with maharaj out of those 500 elite saints the utmost prominent saint you can say maharaj's gem was sadguru muktanand swami nonetheless the one who we remember every day we sing or we say his name every day in the morning and the night time even if we're not remembering him we can say we remember him automatically due to him composing the arti every day we sing and remember muktanand swami nonetheless endless vachnamruts of maharaj have sadguru muktanand swami's name and inside those vachnamruts maharaj gives the utmost top statements for swami Muktanand Swami is such an elite saint that one is unable to comprehend on a mental level how he truly is but we'll try to comprehend we'll try to understand we'll try to experience and get a glimpse of how Swami was the language of gujarati is very very widespread in india and in parts of the world but for the younger generations how will they understand muktanand swami those who speak english how will they really know who muktanand swami is in gujarati numerous scriptures numerous you can say kirtans were written by muktanand swami and scriptures were s- that state that muktanand swami was like this and muktanand swami performed this charitra with maharaj one is able to hear in the language of gujarati but what about for the language of english 
for those who understand only English, how can they experience Sadhguru Muktanan Swami on one level? That's something we want to do today. And Muktanan Swami wasn't such an ordinary child. As we're re recapping, ever since a small age, he did not like to play like the other children. He did not like to associate with small children and play games. All he wanted to do was be engaged in the devotion of Maharaj at such a small age. If we can remember where we were at that time, can we ask that were we at such a position? Where were we? Meaning when muktos, when anadi muktos, when liberated souls, the utmost elite and prominent liberated souls, the, you can say, attendees of Akshardham, when they descend from Akshardham to earth, yes, they attain human bodies like us. They have two hands and they have two legs. They have two eyes and they have two ears. They have everything physically the same. But their soul, their mental perspective, their vision is completely beyond our comprehension, making them who they are and were today. Muktan Swami's childhood was miraculous, but who would not love to take care of such a child? Who would not love to keep such a child and raise that child? Every parent would, because of his numerous virtues he possessed. But Muktan Swami was on a path to become something even greater, to change the lives of millions and millions. But this could only be done if, it, if he could, you can say, let go or completely forget about his householding life. When his parents found out, as you know from last week, they completely denied. So Muktan Swami had to become crazy at that time. His name was Mukundas. He had to become completely crazy and behave in such a fashion. So his parents would become tired of him, tired of him and let him go. Finally, when this was achieved, three times he had to change gurus, meaning spiritual masters, because he wasn't satisfied with their spiritual level. And finally, When Sadhguru Muktanan Swami, at that time, Mukundas, when he met Sadhguru Ramanan Swami for the very first time, his heart was set. For the very first time, when he heard the divine incidences, meaning the lectures, the spiritual, you can say, Kathavarta, from Sadhguru Ramanan Swami's mouth, he was satisfied. He was completely, his mind was locked. He was convinced that this is the guru I want to make. But at that time, Muktanan Swami Mukundas was committed to a guru by the name of Tulsidas, his third and final guru before he met Ramanan Swami. And at that time, Ramanan Swami, when he encountered Muk Mukundas and Mukunda said that please make me your saint I am committed to you Ramanan Swami said you are not committed to me yet you will have to take the permission get the permission from Tulsidas in order for m you to become my disciple so Mukundas knew what he had to do so he went to Tul Tulsidas and after pleading and after telling him that I am, I want another guru, straight forward, Tulsidas gave Mukundas permission to go. And finally, when Mukundas received his permission and went running 
after Raman and Swami and showed Raman and Swami that look Raman and Swami I have received permission as just like you have asked this story reminds me of the story when Pujya Guruji who was young at the age of 12 his name was Vinod he came to become a sadhu at the feet of Dada Guruji so what had happened was in Gujarat there was a city called Surat and Pujya Dada Guruji was the head of one of the temples there and Pujya Guruji he was only a very small child at that time by the name of Vinod Vinod came to Dada Guruji and he said I want to make I want to become your sadhu Dada Guruji said giving him a test go ahead and ask Gansham Maharaj and if Gansham Maharaj give it, gives you permission then you can become my sadhu so at that young age at such an innocent innocent young age of 13 12 Puja Guruji ran off to the mandir and every day he performed 108 tapni mara with standing on one foot in front of Maharaj thinking constantly that Maharaj please give me permission Maharaj please give me permission Puja Guruji performed dunwats every day and after one year of continuous devotion non-stop without even one day breaking at that time Gansha Maharaj appeared from the Murti and tapped young Vinod on the cheek and said go ahead you have my permission to become a Swami at that time Vinod ran to Dada Guruji and there he told Dada Guruji that Dada Guruji or Guruji Guruji Maharaj Gansha Maharaj has given me permission to become your become your saint at that time Dada Guruji he was all knowing and he knew that this was true that Maharaj actually gave him permission Dada Guruji laughed and he said okay no problem just like how such a test was performed between Dada Guruji and Guruji in the same way Sadguru Ramanan Swami also tested Mukundas he said that you have indeed come here to become a saint but I don't need any more saints right now I need you to go to Mulu, Mulubai who is a devotee living at a village nearby he is a farmer he has no employer and I need you to run his fields with an ox every day without any kind of question without any kind of hesitation Mukundas ran to the farm and started to do exactly what Mulube instructed just like how a manager would instruct his employer just like how a king would instruct his servant in the same exact fashion if one went there and saw one would not be able to tell that this is the Akshardham Mukt Sadguru Muktan Swami who has descended with Maharaj on this earth one would not become one would not be able to tell that he is such a mukt because he completely lived a life of a das and most of you who are watching the balls and the kishores have learned this verse hari ke das hi das tin ke das hoi kar chhad kapat karna nash Vartana Shuddha Hoi Kara Vartana Shuddha Hoi Kara Sadguru Muktan Swami's life was like this 
He dedicated his life to Ramanand Swami without any kind of questions. And finally, after one year of continuous farming in the field, can you imagine at that time that one becomes completely crazy in front of one's parents to get their permission to go to become a sadhu. His parents kick him out because he is too crazy to live at home. He changes three gurus, spiritual masters, in order and then he finds his final and true guru, you can say, who his heart is set with. And when he does find his guru, his guru sends him away and instead of saying, yes, you can come and become my sadhu, yes, instead of commemorating him for non-stop, you can say, effort to become a sadhu, resilience, dedication to become a sadhu, Raman Swami sends him away to do farming for one whole year. And yet without a question, Muktan Swami, Mukundas, does the task and after one year he falls at the feet of Raman and Swami when he is called upon and Raman and Swami hugs him and there he initiates him and names him Muktan and Swami on Vasant Panchmi. For a few days Raman and Swami kept Muktan and Swami with him and then he, he sent him off to learn Sanskrit and music in Buj and afterwards completing his education he returned to Raman and Swami and Raman and Swami co-signed him to take care of his ashram which contained 50 sadhus and at that time Nilkan Verni who was on his epic 7 year 8 month 10-day journey around India for the salvation of all ends up at the village of Lodge and there after Nilkan Verni becomes satisfied with Sukhanan Swami's answers for his five questions what is Jeev, Ishwar, Maya, Brahm and Parabrahm Nilkan Verni is amazed and sass, asked, who is your guru? And there, Sukhanan Swami said, our guru is in Bhuj right now, but please meet, you can say, our leader for right now, Sadguru Muktanan Swami. And there, for the very first time in the village of Loj, Sadguru Muktanan Swami meets Nilkan Verni. And Obviously, Maharaj had brought his 500 muktos with him from Akshradham. So this was just kind of like a role that they addressed. But the whole scene was epic. The whole scene was phenomenal at that time. Even by reading such kind of charitras, if we close our eyes, Maharaj can take us to that area where for the very first time Sadhguru Muktanan Swami hugs Nilkan Verni in the village of Loj. In our life there are just some memories that we can't forget. Even when we you can say, have the darshan of Maharaj. At times, there's just some vagas, some clothes of Maharaj that are so beautiful that some days that you just constantly remember Maharaj in that form. Not only that, but our Puja Guruji, some incidences, just a handful that you have had with him that when you remember any kind of disturbances that we have had in our day, any kind of problems that we are going through, any kind of situations 
that we are engaged in, whether it be good or bad. But when we remember Fuji Guruji and some incidences that we, we just cannot forget, then just like how an atom bomb completely destroys everything in its radius in the same way by remembering Fuji Guruji's incidences, by remembering Maharaj, everything in our mind completely becomes wiped out. In the same fashion, Sadhguru Muktanan Swami's meeting, very first meeting, was in Lodge with Nilkan Verney, which was something beyond comprehension, but definitely not beyond, you can say, our vicinity. How so? We can always go there at that time and experience that such kind of meeting had went on. But after meeting Muktanan Swami, Ramanan Swami had written a letter saying that do become or do do as whatever Muktanan Swami commands you. And for 10 months and six days before meeting Ramanan Swami, Nilkan Verni, the Supreme Lord Himself, the Creator, Destroyer, and Sustainer of everything, the All Doer of everything, the One who creates everything, the One who is in everyone, the One who is beyond everything, the One who is untouchable, the One who possesses innumerable attributes the one who is avtari the one who is beyond comprehension he himself for 10 months and 6 days stayed in the agna of Sadguru Muktanan Swami due to the agna of Sadguru Ramanan Swami. What does this show us? This incident that Maharaj is performing for the sake of us, what does it show us? How do we have to become? Maharaj did not say at that time, Maharaj did not become the servant of Ramanan Swami right away. He became the servant of Raman and Swami's servant. There's a kadi that I'm reminded of that we all sing. Dasana dasa thayine vadi jede sat sangama bhakti teni bali manisha rajisha tena rangama dasana das. He became the servant of the servants for 10 months and 6 days. If Muktan Swami said, Nilkan Verni, wash this, he would wash it. Nilkan Verni, go ahead and sweep everything, he would sweep it. Nilkan Verni, go ahead and go cut some grass and come back with it, he would do it. Nilkan Verni, sit here, he would do it. Nilkan Verni, sleep here. He would do it. Each and every command, one by one, without any kind of question, Nilkan Verni did. And after, when Raman and Swami met Nilkan Verni for the very first time, the Rajipo, the experience there that Nilkan Verni received was completely phenomenal wonders we can say but what is Maharaj showing us and beyond that Maharaj's greatness Maharaj is Maharaj he is beyond everything he is beyond everyone yet he is becoming a servant that definitely teaches us that we must stay the servants of God and his sadhus and his devotees no matter what happens 
But nevertheless, looking at that point, Muktanan Swami, out of the 500 elite saints, not only that, the nun santo, but out of the 2,000 paramahansas that Maharaj initiated, Maharaj was his guru and Maharaj was his disciple. Muktanan Swami was the guru of Maharaj and Muktanan Swami was the disciple of Maharaj. This has never happened in the history of this sect. You can, you can say this, has, this incident has never happened with any other son but Sadhguru Muktanan Swami. And that Muktanan Swami is in our lineage. That Muktanan Swami belongs to us, we can say, that we should definitely have pride for Him. We should definitely remember Him on a daily basis. Even in the Vachnamrut, as mentioned last week, Maharaj says that if one encounters some kind of vicious thoughts, then at first hand, clap loudly and say, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan. But nonetheless, also remember great muktos like Sadguru Muktanan Swami. We should remember him because Muktanan Swami played such a role and no other sant in the Swami sect or even, even I can say with confidence that no other religion would have such kind of a relationship where a God, a God who is supreme, a God even in another religion comes down to earth and becomes the disciple of his disciple and allows everything and everything to happen on whatever he says. It's something that we cannot forget. It's something that even if we try to forget, we cannot. And beyond that, we can just remember Muktanan Swami through his sadguns. His life is just beyond imagination, but in such a short span of time, some points were mentioned on Sadhguru Muktanan Swami. He is like deep as an ocean. We cannot measure his greatness. So with that being said, we'd like to remember him last by this verse of Namo Muktananda Prabhupada Tana Sevaka Sada Mahasastra Bhyasi Vedatana Gumave Padakada Kare Varta Jare Sura Sarita Dara Samavahe Kosangi Satsangi Sakala Jana Chitte Atichahe Kusangi Satsangi Sakala Jana Chitte Atichahe This ends our lecture on Sadhguru Muktanan Swami and his life. For a couple of announcements, this week, this Saturday, Baal Satsang exam was taken. The scores will be revealed after winter workshop. The gifts for first, second, and third will be announced in winter workshop. Winter workshop is just right around the corner. Dates of December 30th, 31st, and January 1st. Registration if you haven't done so, is on the swaminarayan.org. So please remember to do so. Something new this time, be celebrating the New Year's here in the presence of Piura Gansham Maharaj and Puja Santo and all of you devotees. So whoever parents are watching, please encourage your child if they're nearby to bring them, to visit them here at Mandir. It's at Loyadam Anje. All the contact information is on our website. If you have any questions, you can visit our website. The email is also there. So please do come and attend Winter Workshop. Saying this, my humble Jay Swaminare.
ಪರ್ಣಿವೆ ಶರಮಣೀಯದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸರುಚಿರಾನಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿತ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೇರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಆಲ್ ಮೈ ರಿ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಔಡ್ ಬಿಲ್ ಔಟ್ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪಾತ್ ಮೇ ಕಟ್ ಯೋರ್ ಲಿಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಪಾತ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಡೇವ್ ಇಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಟುಡೇ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಕ್ತ ಚಿಂತಾಮಣಿ ಸದ್ಗುರು ನಿಸ್ಕುರಾನಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬರ್ಸ್ ದ ಅನದರ್ ಇನ್ಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಇನ್ ಸಮ್ ಅನದರ್ ಡೇವ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಹಿರಾಟ್ ಹವೆ ಹಿಂದೂಸ್ಥಾನ ವಡಿಲ ಖೂ ಪರ ಜೇಹ ಸಾಮರ್ಥಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಸಾಂಬಡ ಜೊ ಕಹೂ ತೇಹ ನಿಸ್ಕುನಾನ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ರಾಟ್ ದಟ್ ನಾವು ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ರೈಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಇನ್ಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಟು ದ ಡ್ಯೂಟೀಸ್ ಹು ಲಿವ್ ಅಟ್ ನಾರ್ದನ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಟುಡೇ ಕಾಲ್ ಆಸ್ the state of uttar pradesh there was a small village by the name of duwa there in the state of uttar pradesh there there was some devotees lived in the village but initially at the beginning there was only one and single devotee by the name of binda binda was very young but as he was uh at his r- relatives village another village and at that time he came in a contact with bhagwan swami and santo and by listening the glory and greatness of bhagwan swami narayan from the swami narayan santo this binda he became a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan and after having accepted the uh, fellowship of bhagwan swami narayan binda become very he become very changed and he started to perform puja he started to do bhajan and kirtan he even started to read the sikshapatri and the other scriptures now in this way as this binda he had follow the righteousness so definitely those who never try or who who or those who never uh like to follow righteousness the path of righteousness they definitely have some animity towards this binda binda was a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan he had no any kind of problems or no anything with others but those who are non believers they have definitely some problem with binda why because binda was a devotee and he follow righteousness meaning a path of righteousness and that's why those who are non believers and those who had a uh, very bad habits and they have the addictions like to drink and alcohol or many other habits and that's why those uh who have such kind of addiction and habit bad habits they in a comparison of this binda they all look like a bad person in the community in a society and that's why they have animity towards this binda but the one amazing thing is that the uh binda had many many uh binda he was a devotee and that's why uh the other those who are non devotees or non believers they have animity and some problems with this binda but the most important thing is that binda's aunty she w- had too much problem with the binda why because 
she was not a devotee not only that but she even did not believe that bhagwan swami narayan is a bhagwan and that's why she believe only in some kind of deities and goddesses in which fellowship they believe uh, no any particular rules or regulations they can eat whatever they like they can drink whatever they like in this way she believe and she follow such a religious path that uh, such a religious faith they believe that there is no any particular kinds of rules or regulations for the mankind she also came in such kind of bhavas and sanyasis those also preach the same kind of things that there will be no any particular rules or regulations for the humans and totally oppose uh, totally opposite from her belief this binda he follow particular neons meaning uh, rules and regulations of his life also as a religious person or a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan binda follow each and every commands given by bhagwan swami narayan to all of his devotees and that's why binda's auntie she had too much animosity or dislike for binda and that's why she every day without any reason try to tease or even abuse this binda even though binda had no any he had no perform any kind of mistake still binda's auntie without any fault she even many times throw his uh, throw her anger on binda and even many times she abuses binda and binda's bhagwan meaning bhagwan swami narayan this was happened for many many years and after many years time was passed and binda's aunties time of death arrived when the final moment arrived binda's aunties she felt too much pain she could not see anything else she could not listen anything else and finally she could see very danger very very danger some attendants of the death god meaning the jamdut now she had too much fear in her heart and as one of the universal principle for human being when he had any kind of fear first he remember remember the person for whom he or she had affection or a trust that that person can help me in this situation so according to this law of nature binda's auntie she try to remember the form of god or goddesses she throughout her life offer her devotion to those deities and goddesses but she could not have any kind of profit or benefit after remembering those deities and goddesses now after that she also remember all those bhavas and sanyasis who had given her this kind of uh, false knowledge or information regarding the non rules or non uh, regulations of the human life but still she could not be relieved from the pain or the fear of these yamdutas 
and finally she pondered o- o- all of her life that throughout my life in my life i daily abuses my nephew binda even though he was a duty of bhagwan still i performed the gravest mistake in my life in this way she r- remember binda as a duty not as her nephew now because of the merit of remembering bhagwan swaminarayan's duty she could automatically remember uh, binda's god meaning bhagwan swaminarayan and she by mistake she suddenly spoke out the name of bhagwan swaminarayan swaminarayan and as she spoke swaminarayan so all those jamdus they coming near to her they all stop at the same place and even they step back now she thought in her mind that as i spoke only once bhagwan swaminarayan's name so all these jamduts they even stop not only stop but also one step back so now i should remember bhagwan swaminarayan as well as i should chant his holy name and then after she started to chant swaminarayan 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 and in this way the jamduts they could not even touch not only that but they could not even come near to her and finally as she realized that only by chanting bhagwan swaminarayan's holy name one can be relieved from the clutches of these jamduts so the original greatness of bhagwan swaminarayan one cannot imagine or one cannot measure it. and by understanding bhagwan swaminarayan's glory and greatness in this way she by her mind and by her heart she prayed to bhagwan swaminarayan that please bhagwan forgive me i am f- right now feeling guilty for my mistake as i throughout my life abuse your duty and also you you are true god you are the supreme personality of god please forgive me in this way as she prayed to bhagwan swaminarayan and we know bhagwan swaminarayan is the most compassionate person and that's why bhagwan swaminarayan manifested over there and as bhagwan swaminarayan divinely manifested over there so all those jamdus they flew away now bhagwan also gave the darshan to all uh, to many other peoples in the village of dua and uh, finally after getting darshan of bhagwan swaminarayan this binda's auntie she relieved from all kinds of fear or pain and finally she prayed to bhagwan swaminarayan please forgive me because i have mis- i have made a mistake not a mistake but the gravest mistake in my life to abuse you and your duty you are a true god now i understood your glory and greatness so please relieve me from this body and please take me with you in your divine abode and finally bhagwan swaminarayan this is the incident by reading this incident one can also get some wrong message that if one abuses the duty or even speak ill of the duties one can reach into aksardham that is not the message of this incident but 
Bhagwan Swaminarayan came there to take this Binda's auntie to his Akshardham and gave her darshan at the final moment. Why? Because she understood the greatness and glory of Bhagwan Swaminarayan as it is, and that's why Bhagwan Swaminarayan came there. More than that, Bhagwan uh, Binda's auntie she understood her mistake. And for her mistake, she asked for forgiveness for many, many times with her pure and deepest heart. And that's why Bhagwan Swaminarayan, as his nature is that, and his words in the Vajnamrit and many of the scriptures, that whenever my devotee or a person who remember me at the time of his or her death, at the time, I will definitely will be there to take him or her into my Akshardham. And that's why Bhagwan Swaminarayan to follow his words. He divinely appear in front of this Binda's auntie. In this way Bhagwan Swaminarayan while giving darshan to all the villagers. Finally Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself along with many santos and devotees go back to his Akshardham with this Binda's auntie. Now as witness this incident by all of those all of the villagers they all become a devotee of Bhagwan Swami and they all become a follower of Binda because in the village first there was no any other devotee besides this Binda and that's why they understood Binda even though he was young still they understood Binda as a senior devotee in the village and they follow commands of Bhagwan Swaminarayan in the guidance of Binda so this is what the Bhagwan Swaminarayan want to make some different kinds of uh, miracles even a person who abuses Devotee and even Bhagwan, but if the same person can understand Bhagwan Swaminarayan's glory and greatness as, as it is, and if the same person asks for forgiveness to Bhagwan, then Bhagwan Swaminarayan is such a different and the supreme God, so that he can give forgiveness. So this is the message from this incident. The second incident written by Nishkudanan Swami in the same chapter. Uh, the second incident happened in the same village. As the whole villagers, uh, the whole village become a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. So in only many few families in the village, they did not still believe in Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And they have some doubt in their mind. Now most of the people in the village they become a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. But one couple by the name of Thakurdas and his wife Dhanubai, they become very staunch believer and follower of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Even after getting knowledge from Binda regarding the five religious woes of a household life and the another five religious woes which which was for the renunciant duty meaning for the santo so as they un uh, understood the these five religious woes so they decided not only to follow five religious woes for the household life but they decided to follow the five religious woes prescribed for the renunciant devotee. And that's why, as they decided to follow the foe of non lust meaning become a brahmachari or we can say it celibate. For that, when Thakudas was there in the ho uh, inside the home, his wife Dhanubai, she sat outside from the home. And when she came inside the home, Thakudas, he sat outside the home. 
not only that but even by mistake or without knowing meaning unknowingly if they touch each other's clothes then they both perform a waterless, waterless fast this is what the intensity they have to please bhagwan swami narayan as all the other devotees they knew about these uh, religious vows performed by this couple thakur das and his wife dhanubai so all of the devotees of the village they all become very pleased upon both of this person thakur das as well as his wife dhanubai and they all the other devotees they all understood their uh, glory meaning mahima but those who have still doubt that either bhagwan swami narayan is a god or not they have definitely have a problem why because they enjoy the social and family life and instead of enjoying the social relation or the family life this thakur das and his wife dhanubai they both enjoying the nonless religious vows which is only for the prescribed for renunciant devotee and they only want to please bhagwan swami narayan and that's why many of the non believer they many times say to this couple that we also want to become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan but how can we become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan if we become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan then we have also we have to follow the religious vows just as you are following right now meaning we have to renounce our social life even we have to cut off our relations in our family that's why we do not want to become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan in this way many such kind of people they did not accept their religious vows and this was happen for many days finally bhagwan swami narayan divinely came there he gave a divine darshan to this divine couple thakur das and his wife dhanubai and after giving darshan bhagwan swami narayan himself gave command to those blessed couple that now from today i become very pleased upon both of you and this is my command for both of you now engage in your social life family life do not follow further the vow of this nonless only for uh, which is only for the santo and you now start your household life this is my command for you so after uh, having darshan of maharaj and with, with mahara there was also mukund brahmachari and this couple they have darshan of maharaj as well as mukund brahmachari and after getting blessings and commands from bhagwan swami and himself they both decided to give one of their uh, de- decision not to engage in household life and from the next day they started to live according to the uh, according to the rules and regulations prescribed for the householder duty but how can the other or the non believers all the, or the other devotees they believe that they have the darshan of bhagwan swami narayan and bhagwan swami narayan himself gave a command to live in this way meaning live as a household duty how one can believe so bhagwan swami narayan himself gave some duties divine darshan and himself talk about this incident that i gave darshan to this blessed couple thakur das and his wife dhanubai and i gave them command to live according to the 
rules and regulations for the household activity and do not follow further the the decision not to touch each other each other and not to speak with each other and not to stay in a same room in this way bhagwan swami gave darshan and message to the devotees as well as those who was say to this couple that we want to become a devotee but we do not why because you follow this strictly follow these rules and if we become a devotee so we have to follow such kind of rules so we don't we do not want to become a devotee those people also get the darshan of bhagwan swami narayan and bhagwan swami narayan also gave the same message to those and that's why they all become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan and finally the whole village become a satsangi village meaning there was not a single family or person who do not believe in bhagwan swami narayan in this way by giving this uh, in this way bhagwan swami narayan giving the divine darshan not only his devotees but also to non devotees and himself giving a uh, some kind of glimpse uh, upon his greatness and divinity and finally as all become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan so all enjoying uh, bhagwan swami narayan's divine memory in their minds and pass their life according to bhagwan swami narayan's rules and regulations in this way nishkulana swami described this two incident for today and the another two incident there was also written in the same chapter but nishkulana swami will describe us and next time shri ganeshyam maharaj ni jay shri patim shri dharam sarva deveshwaram bhakti dharmatmajam vasudevam hare madavam keshavam kamadam karanam swami narayanam nilakandham bhaje shri ganeshyam maharaj ni jay